the Art and Industry of Business and Living podcast, discussing conscious choices around business, money, life and living and creating a greater future for you and the planet. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art and Industry of Business and Living. You're with Simone Millis as your host, and I am in Roma, Italy at the moment. Uh, we've just done a, an amazing class with Dr. Dane here called Maestro. And tomorrow we actually start a class with Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, called The Art of Greatness, which I'm super excited about. And I actually think we started at lunchtime today <laughs> for our conversation. So, Hence, I am joined here with uh, my friend, Dr. David Kubitz. Welcome, David. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> and David has been on the show a couple of times, and he is um, he's an inspiration to me in so many things that he chooses. And I'm going to say mainly because he's always continuously willing to have a look at what is not working and change it. That's correct. <laughs> I'm very grateful for that. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about today is creating more ease with your business and money. And I want to sort of, you know, ping David here and talk about some of the things that people don't choose or do choose that actually limit them. So one of the things that uh, we were just talking about is there's an access consciousness tool called, it's like called light and heavy. It's like basically if something makes you feel lighter and it's like, mm, choose it. And it's like choice creates awareness. It's like we can change many things, but ultimately what you have is choice and choice will always create something different for you. So what are some of the things that you see people doing and how they could change that day? But what have you noticed? Well, what I, what I know, noticed recently is people use this tool light and heavy as an excuse in order not to create. Everything that they don't want to create, everything that they are afraid of, everything that's uncomfortable for them, everything that would require them to leave their comfort zone, it's heavy for them. And then they go, oh, it's heavy, I'm not choosing it. So rather than looking at uh, how can I change it, they leave it as it is and walk away and don't create. Okay, so one of the things you just mentioned there is comfort zone. Let's talk about yes. that. <laughs> comfort zone. <laughs> because I do see, you know, everyone has defined, uh, you know, their own comfort zone. Doesn't necessarily mean mine is the same as yours. And yet, when we create a comfort zone, what do you see people choosing and what they limit themselves by? Well, once you have defined your comfort zone, you determine also your limitation at borders. You're not willing to go beyond it. Uh, you feel more or less comfortable. Comfortable. It kind of works. There is a desire to create more, but you're not choosing it. It's this. It's this one step that's required in order to create more that people are not willing to take. It's just one single step, and then it would flow anyhow. But in, instead of taking that one step and doing that one uncomfortable thing, they rather stay inside where they are, where they actually don't have to change anything because everything they need to survive is kind of working. So interesting you also use the word desire because you mentioned what they desire to create, yet how do you see like the difference of what someone desires to create and yet what they choose to create? Well, it's easy to desire something because uh, a desire is something that takes place in your head. It's kind of these hopes and dreams and you have these daydreams of what you could do and how beautiful everything would be would be if, yeah, if what? If you would actually choose it. When it comes to choosing something, action is required. And this is where things can get uncomfortable. Um, and this is where you just need to close your eyes, make that step, walk through it to finally find out nothing happened, you didn't die, it wasn't embarrassing, um, and you're just moving on. So why do you see that most people don't choose to take that step? What I've seen is they are most of the time afraid of being judged, afraid of making the wrong choice, and afraid of failing. That's actually the biggest limitation. Which is interesting because one of the things, I mean, we talk about in Joy of Business a lot is the joy of failure. It's like this place where, I mean, I know in Australia it's very much so like the, well, you gave it a shot, you gave it a go, you know, well done, you know. <laughs> but you still have this like, well, you gave it a shot and you di it didn't work out. Now you're the same as everyone else. Whereas what if you could actually be different and not be the same as everyone else and what if you actually were the most successful person 
You knew. Well, what if a thing like a failure wouldn't exist in reality? What's no. actually a failure? Does a failure really exist? I mean, how can moving forward, changing and going on and desiring more and taking more action can ever be a failure? It might not turn out the way you would like to see it or the, you, the way you would like to go, the direction, but it's but you're still moving. Or the way you thought you could control it. Yeah, I, maybe <laughs> that. <laughs> Not that I'm doing that. <laughs> um, I want uh, I had that and I had to go through that too. I was just so um, afraid and uncomfortable being on stage, uh, talking to people. And then I met uh, uh, an access consciousness facilitator, Susanna Mittermeier. She was doing right voice for you. And she said, well, why don't you come to my class? And I said, yeah, I only come if you don't uh, ask me on stage and if you don't ask me to sing. Because I ha came to the conclusion that me singing on stage would be the most embarrassing thing I could ever do. Which is interesting because you're choosing something based on I have these conclusions of what it can look like and my limitations of what I won't choose. Exactly. That felt, that was the most that, that felt so heavy, and I felt so stupid. I, I had all these justifications and and reasons why not doing it. So I know I can't sing. Why would I make a fool out of myself in front of twenty five people? You don't do that. So this was my comfort zone that I wasn't willing to leave because I thought, okay, well, not happening. I just. That was, so that was there. Well, <laughs> she said she wouldn't do it. I went to her class. I had to fly all the way to, uh, to Amsterdam. This is how I manipulate myself. If I go to a different country to do a class, I make sure I'm not running away. Right. <laughs> it's self-manipulation <laughs> to choose more. And then she called me on stage. And guess what? <laughs> I had to sing. <laughs> what did you sing? <laughs> I sang Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. Nice. <laughs> and it was the most uncomfortable moment of my life. Are you going to give us a rendition now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Let me finish my story. <laughs> it was so uncomfortable. And then Susanna said, well, why don't you just do it? And then after you did it, we talk about uh, how horrible it was and then we can actually talk about all the damage you created and all that stuff and I did it it was fun it wasn't that bad and guess what nothing nothing absolutely nothing happened I just had a good time <laughs> wow so if you're actually willing to get out of your own way be out of control be willing to choose based on not what you thought was going to work but actually what could create something greater you might actually have more fun. Uh, more fun, more ease, and way more success in your business. Because I uh, came back from, from Amsterdam and said, well, what if I did that with every situation that's uncomfortable in my business, like uh, asking for more money, reminding clients that they have to pay their invoices, actually charging for uh, those short kind of facilitations. Can you help me out? Can you just take a quick look and then say, well, you can have a session. Mm. If you pay me, I'm willing to look at it. So it, it, it was a huge change. It was a huge change because I experienced that going beyond that border, leaving comfort zone, it doesn't kill you. <laughs> Nothing happens. It's not embarrassing. It just, it just creates more. It was actually a gift. So interesting too, because it's like, what if I did it my way? was not about controlling it what if I did it my way was the willingness as you said before was to follow the energy and choose what is light for you what is truly light for you because so many things that we think is heavy it's not our it, it's not us it's not ours it's what everybody else thinks should be heavy so many people are afraid to make a choice so many people are not willing to leave the comfort zone if you are willing to do that you are standing out of the crowd you're mm. one in a million um, so that's actually something you should also notice are you truly and really afraid of it mm. or are you excited about it and then everybody else is afraid of you doing it because then you show the others that it's actually possible which puts them in a very uncomfortable position <laughs> you know uh, it's a random story but it's interesting as you talk about this you know years and years ago when I was backpacking around Europe and I didn't have much money and I was I was very proud that I was doing it on no money 
And I remember getting uh, in Germany what they call the Mitfahrzentrale. Like you, I don't know if it actually still exists, but you you apply for it. And say someone, you know, riding from Berlin to Munich in a car, they put in and, and then you say, I want to go from Berlin to Munich. So you jump in the car with them and you share the, the yes. cost of petrol, right? Yes. So it's a cheap way to get around <laughs> if you if you have a car and you're driving or if you're backpacking, etc. So I did that. And I remember arriving in Munich and this woman was like, and I spoke so little German. And, you know, so the car trip was like, hmm, my, my German and her no English. And when we got to Munich and she said, where do you want to go? And I said, I just want to go to the main central station. And she said, but there's no trains going now. And I said, that's fine. I'm going to sleep on the train station. And she looked at me and she was horrified. She was like, you can't sleep on the train station. And I was like, but it's like 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. To me at that stage, I wasn't going to get a hotel because I did hardly had any money. And, you know, I can get a train at 6 a.m. So it's fine. And she just wouldn't have it. And so she ended up, she put the car, car over and we she found this uh, centre that was at Munich train station that is a centre for women who have been uh, abused, like raped, attacked, by, you know, et cetera. So I ended up sleeping on the floor of their centre because she just wouldn't have it. But it's interesting because that was like me doing it my way and going, no, no, it's fine. And it's like choosing what was lighter for me and yet it wasn't in her world to have that. And what I would like you guys all to have a look at is it's like how many times do you choose based on somebody else's point of view of what you should be choosing rather than actually what does truly make you feel lighter and what else can you receive when you're making those choices so that you can create something greater like it's it, it's uh, so many times I see we base our choices on what somebody else has decided is is you know right good perfect and correct i mean you say what makes you feel lighter and it's like okay so what about a perverted point of view well what makes a perverted point of view is your point of view and that could never be light because this society this reality wouldn't allow it to be light that has to be happy so what recommendations and what tools or questions would you you know recommend that people can actually start to look at what is light for them like you said when people choose they say, oh, this makes me feel light or this makes me feel heavier. But is that true? Like, well, how do well, you start to find that for you? Well, what I do, what, what I do in these situations and what I recommend is once you have this desire, once you're excited about something, and when it comes to instituting it or actually do, doing the first step, when that heavy comes when you decide to do it, uh, just make a full stop in your mind and ask the question, well, stop. There was so much excitement. Now when it comes to doing, it feels heavy. Is that a lie? Is it really heavy? And what can I do now? What question can I ask? What tool can I use to turn it into something light? Well, and explore it. Explore it, ask questions around it, and actually see, okay, how can I change it? Yeah. Rather than, oh, I'm not doing it. Because one of the things I see, I mean, when you talk about this too, and we talk about question, choice, possibility, contribution, and access, and... To me, it looks like a tree. So you've got like this this huge trunk of the tree and then each branch is this possibility. So you could go, oh, this makes me feel lighter. I'm going to choose this. So you're going up this branch, but as you're going up and you're asking more questions, there's a whole lot of other branches. There's a whole lot of other leaves that can, that are possibilities that can contribute to something that is creating a, a future. And yet... If you, if you also stick to your guns, as they say, and go, no, this is what I've decided, then you've just concluded something rather than actually going, oh, okay, I'm allowed to change my mind. Yeah, that's another thing that's, that's uh, a total gift. If you allow yourself to have flexibility, you can always change your ideas. You can always change your choices um, as long as you keep choosing and going forward. Um, sticking to a um, first idea, to a business plan or to a certain way of how you thought this should be instituted it doesn't make sense. Flexibility is, 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 is required in, when it comes to creation. Because the world changes around you. Yes, and maybe, I mean, maybe you find out that this would, would be easier now, that this would work better now. It doesn't make sense to stick to a plan just because you had a plan. Flexibility is always required. Flexibility and the willingness to look at things from a different point of view and give yourself time as well. Uh, when this feeling of, of uncomfort, of heavy occurs, 
just give yourself time, explore it, ask questions, look look at it from a different side. Um, just keep going. Don't stop it. Don't stop your creation. What I, the way I, I handle these situations is I'm, I'm going into, okay, what's what's the worst the worst case scenario that right. could actually happen? This is what I did on stage when I was finally willing to, to start singing. I was like, hey, what's the worst case scenario? Well, everybody would laugh at me. So, well, at least they have a good time. And I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's not significant. And you did it your way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So... And then also be honest to yourself. What could, what's the what's the worst case that could happen now? Well, at least you you, you made an experience. So yeah. um, as long as you don't die, <laughs> I, I would go for it. And you know what? If you die, you die. That's still a choice too. <laughs> That's good because you don't notice. Once yeah. you're dead, yeah, exactly. you don't notice yes. anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, give yourself some 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 lightness, some fun, some joyful energy with it. Don't make it significant only because it's business. And even if money is involved, it's not that significant. So most of most of the time, people do make business and money significant. They they put such significance on it that they have to make the right choice rather than actually, as you're talking about, doing it your way and following the energy and choosing what makes you feel lighter. What Do you have any questions or tools that you can offer people to actually start to look at this to not make it so significant? Well, yes, there is nothing such as a right choice. Um, every choice is a right choice. I think the, uh, the only f mistake, the only failure that really exists is not choosing. Every mm. choice leads to, it's like, it's like going on a hike. I mean, it's one step after the other. You can't uh, fly uh, to the top of the mountain uh, or beam yourself up there. It's everything is one step after the other. It's one choice after the other. And if that choice turns out uh, or, or leads you somewhere that's even more uncomfortable, then make another choice. Never go back. It's choosing, make another choice, make another choice, make another choice. But it's a constant moving forward. It's never a full stop and it's never going backwards. When you look at nature, going backwards doesn't exist in nature. Everything is continuous. It's always everything moves forward, mm. and we are a product of nature. So why would our life ever be different than nature? You know, it's funny when you talk about the hiking thing. I remember years ago, David, I went hiking in Nepal, and uh, it was an eight-day hike that we did, and we walked eight to ten hours a day, like blisters on the back of the feet, the whole thing. And I'm halfway through it, going. Oh my goodness, why did I choose this? Like, this is insane. Like, I was exhausted. In, in, but you couldn't, if I turned back, it would take just as long to get back yep. as it would to keep exactly. moving forward. So it was such a, it was funny because physically it was, it was quite full on. But I'm going to say mentally it was even more full on because you were just walking like eight, ten hours a day and it was nonstop. And you, I was like questioning what I was choosing, questioning my choices, questioning the next choice. And then we got to where we were going and we were made to fly home and there's no planes there. There was, the weather was horrific. It was, you know, it was horrible. So we spent two days there and I went, I'm not doing this anymore. So I ended up hiring with this other English guy, a Russian plane with the Russian pilot. Everyone was like, oh my God, you're gonna die. And I was like, I'm not dying. I'm getting out of here. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so we did, we chose to hire this Russian plane and get out of there so that I could get back to Kathmandu. But it was so interesting. Cause I was like, no, I am not staying here. I'm making another choice. But everyone's projections was, this is like a death trap. And I was like, I'm not dying. I know I'm not dying. Let's go. I'm just hiring this. And it was the hairiest plane ride I've ever done. But I was like, I'm out of here. I need to create something different. And like, it's like, how many of you actually don't take that, take that, I want to say risk, but it's not really risk. It's like that, that awareness that you have and that knowing that you have that something greater is going to occur by the choices that you're willing to make by, as you said before, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Well, there's another tool that I, that I use quite a lot when it comes to significant decisions. And in this reality, some decisions are significant. Um, I always ask the question, well, do I have to choose right now? Is now the time to do it? Well, I want to say, hang on, are they significant or do they just make major changes in your life like they, big like small choices big choices 
You know, having sex with someone, getting married. Small choice, big choice. You know what I mean? It's one of those big choices where yeah. everybody else thinks it's significant, yeah. where you have been trained to make it significant because it's a lot of money, because it will actually, I don't know, be uh, create your future. You, you, you go to the notary, you've set up the company, you start your business, you buy... Uh, a share of a company, you know, wherever you think, where you actually you make it significant. I mean, it's not wrong to make things significant. I, what I sometimes do when I get into this weird situation, oh, I'm not, is it light, is it heavy, what is it? Well, is now the time to choose or could I do that tomorrow Great morning? Question. yeah. And then next morning, once you had a good night's sleep, a new day is there and maybe it's easier. Maybe it wasn't the time. In my, in my uh, law firm, we have this uh, general rule when we have to issue legal opinions, important ones. Uh, we never do same day deliveries. Right. Because it, sometimes things need time. Time is not really relevant, but sometimes it's just not the time. Sometimes there is, some, there is an information that's missing. Sometimes, I don't know, maybe you have this uh, amazing idea next morning and it would add to your project. So, Putting yourself under pressure is not really the best choice you can make in this situation. Well, yeah, putting yourself under pressure doesn't actually create awareness is what I would say. And what you're looking for is with choices is to have awareness of creating something greater. You can't force yourself into greater. (laughs) (laughs) Not that I'm doing that, but... (laughs) Convince yourself, push yourself, project at you. No, none of that is fun. I can laugh about it now because I was doing it a lot and I'm still doing it. (laughs) But at least I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of the fact that I'm doing it and then I can have more ease with it because yeah. it's not wrong. I mean, <laughs> And you're also willing to change it. Yes. And, and that's one of the key things I see is the willingness to actually change your point, like your points of view and your choices. Like just because you've made a choice doesn't mean you have to stick to it. You make a choice, you stick to it, then it becomes a decision and it locks you in. It creates a limitation, creates a conclusion rather than like, oh, I made this choice. Yeah. And I can change it as well. Correct. And if you don't choose it, you will never find out if it was really light or heavy. So if you really want to create more, if you really want to explore your life and create greater, you have to make a choice because without choosing, it doesn't take you anywhere. So are we going to hear a line? A line? <laughs> Just one one line, Frank Sinatra. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't have the lyrics here. I'm sorry. You could just sing, I, I did it my way. I did it my way. <laughs> thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Thank you, Dr. David Kubis. So thank you for joining me here. And you can find Dr. David Kubis on accessconsciousness.com. Do you have your own Yes, website? I have. Where, where, where can people find you? It's uh, drdavidkubis.com. It will be online next week. I'm that, launching but, next well, that's week. by the time we actually Good, launch. wonderful. So there you go. This is the woo, surprise. This is I have the my first visitors on yeah, my website. Exactly. <laughs> thank you, Simone. And one of the things I highly recommend you checking out with David is two things. One is he does classes on wealth and money. He is part of the Wealth Creators Anonymous, which is uh, a whole lot of facilitators that I see that are actually willing to have wealth in their life. And guess what? Wealth means pretty much what you think it doesn't. And the other thing I'd like to mention too is he has a great series called Art of Travel. I actually have done a show with David a while ago. You can probably find it on my page on the Art of Travel. He is phenomenal at travel and if he does another course please 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 sign up to it it's like he has literally saved me thousands and thousands of dollars by his uh tricks of the trade let's call them thank you (laughs) and he's created them as his it's like he's a a very intelligent man who has the willingness to look at how he can you know manipulate things and create something as his own which i'm very grateful for and i'm grateful that you're an, an amazing awesome being and a good friend of mine thank you david Thank you so much, Simone, and thank you for having me on your show. You're so welcome. And I also have a Business Done Different class coming up in Noosa, Australia in November if you'd like to come. If you don't want to make it to the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Noosa, Australia, you can also join online. We also have a one-evening course called Kickstart Your Business. It's a new class that I'm doing, so it's one evening. It's $100 live or online, so you can find on accessjoyofbusiness.com 
or also on simonemelissas.com. So thank you so much for joining us here today and we'll see you next time. I'll probably be doing another podcast from Roma, Italy. It's beautiful, although it's raining at the moment, which is, it's beautiful that it's raining as well. It just means I can't go on my veranda right now. <laughs> so thank you, David, so much. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.